With 16,892 Iowans voting, the winner of the 2011 Iowa Straw Poll is Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Thank you, everyone, and have a good night. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Can I tell them the result? The winner of the Iowa Straw Poll is Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. As I see it here, was it? I'm going to bring back the panel here. Hi, I was just reading the board over your shoulder. I don't have the numbers. Oh, here they are. Ron Paul, number two. Tim Pawlenty, number three. And who was number two? Ron, Ron Paul. Paul. Ron Paul. 4,600. Pawlenty had 2,200, almost 2,300. Santorum came in fourth with 1,657. And Herman Cain came in fifth. And I didn't see how many votes uh, Bachman got, but she obviously won. John Huntsman got 69. Okay. Thaddeus Makata, 35. We're doing a play-by-play -play here. <laughs> get you see what happened here is the, uh, the head of the Iowa Republican Party, Matt Strawn, came out and announced the winner, and the rest of the uh, places uh, essentially came up on the screen. They didn't announce them. So, again, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, the big winner. Uh, we have uh, Ron Paul. Congressman Ron Paul came in second, and Governor Tim Pawlenty came in third. Now, the question is, the cheering is happening here for Ron Paul in the stadium. Chris Wallace, this is exciting. It is exciting. Uh, I have to say two things. I have to, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Oh, Michelle Bachman got 4,800 votes, 4,823. So that's interesting. She got and it's in Congressman's Hall. It was almost a tie. It was 4,600 votes wow. for Ron Paul, Congressman Paul. And, and then Pawlenty, 2,200 roughly for Congresswoman Buck. And so. Pawlenty with 2,200. I, I think they're two big, well, actually, they're three big strikes. First of all, Michelle Bachman won. That certainly cements her position as a serious player in this race. On the other hand, Ron Paul with very little money, just a lot of, uh, of organization, grassroots organization, came in only 200 votes behind her. And Tim Pawlenty finished third, and, and after spending over a million dollars, a distant third. And what does the benefit of this boost mean to Michelle Bachman in terms of how she moves forward, her fundraising, and is this new life? Is this does this mean that Ron Paul is now a contender for a caucus win? Well, I think with uh, Congresswoman Bachman, it's a sign of the energy and enthusiasm that her campaign has engendered in the state, and she's starting to build an organization that has caught up with that. Uh, and everybody knows the Iowa caucus press, uh, Iowa caucus process is one that requires dedicated, motivated volunteers in 1,800 precincts across the state in February. And this is a great head start on that effort. Again, Congresswoman Bachman with a big win here at the Iowa Straw Poll. Congressman Ron Paul only losing, coming in second by about 200 votes. And then we had Tim Pawlenty, the governor from Min former governor from Minnesota, coming in third. And Rick Santorum, the senator, former senator from Pennsylvania, coming in fourth. We'll go all over all of these results, what it means, who's going where, more from the Ames Straw Poll, and where we go from here in just one minute. We're back with the panel after this break. Uh, first, obviously, Congresswoman Bachman, then Ron Paul, just a couple of hundred votes away. And you see how close it really was. Governor Pawlenty in third, Senator Santorum in fourth. Uh, Herman Cain there at fifth, and then the next page, an interesting development in that uh, the write-in candidacy of Texas Governor Rick Perry beat uh, the, and he wasn't really running in the straw poll, but Mitt Romney, Governor Mitt Romney, there you see Newt Gingrich, John Huntsman, and our guest earlier, Congressman Thaddeus McCotter. Well, I'm, uh, look, Bachman won, winning is better, that's the most important thing in the election, but I will say this, uh, if my subtraction skills uh, remain, uh, Bachman beat Paul by 152 votes. She has been on TV all over the place since we got here. Uh, I'm sure that she got a lot uh, less for her money than, than Ron Paul did. I suspect he spent a lot less per voter than, than she did. Having said that, she won. She's a viable candidate. She's a player. 
Paul is what he is, which is an enormous grassroots candidate. Ron Paul and went to Santorum after his talk about Iran and foreign policy. And you think about 152 votes, you know, who knows? What about the debate? During, a, during a live introduction to Congressman Ron Paul on Tuesday, America's Newsroom incorrectly aired a clip from the 2010 CPAC event in Washington rather than this year's event. Uh, it was clearly a mistake. We used the wrong videotape. There are similarities in the shot between last year's event and this year. 2011 screen left, 2010 screen right. Ron Paul won both years. However, there were audible boos in 2010. Well, you heard a lot more cheering this year. Uh, it's an honest mistake. We apologize for the error, and we look forward to having Representative Paul back on our program very soon. The winner of this year's CPAC Straw Bowl is now. Okay. Well, the winner of this year's CPAC Straw Bowl is Texas Congressman Ron Paul. It is the result of the presidential straw poll, and this year probably was one of the longer lists we've ever had. Um, and we had a number of writing candidates, which I'll touch on when I show the results. And we asked this year, we asked it two ways. We asked it as a first choice, and we asked it as a second choice. And I'll show the combination of both. Um, and the next slide, the winner of the straw poll this year... Okay. Congressman, Congressman Ron Paul gets 30%. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. Another question about electability. Do you have any, sir? There's always the question as to whether or not <laughs> you are, in fact, viable. Your differences with the Republicans on the, with the rest of the Republicans on this stage has raised questions about whether or not you can actually win the general, the Republican nomination, sir. When, when you think about it, if you measured everything I've ever said, every vote I've ever taken against the Constitution, you know, I'm a strict constitutionalist. Are you suggesting the Republicans should write me off because I'm a strict constitutionalist? I'm the most conservative member here. I have voted, you know, against more spending and wasting government than anybody else. So you're suggesting that I'm not electable and the Republicans don't want me because I'm a strict fiscal conservative? Because I believe in civil liberties? Why should we not be, be defending civil liberties? And why should we not be de talking about foreign policy that used to be the part of the Republican Party? Mr. Republican Robert Taft didn't even want us to be in NATO. And you're saying now that we have to continue to borrow money from China to finance this empire that we can't afford? I, let me see if I get this right. We, we need to borrow $10 billion from China, and then we give it to Musharraf, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war, we lose all these lives promoting democracy in Iraq. I mean, what's going on here? And you're saying, and you're saying that this isn't appealing to Republicans? Where did, where did this come about? I think the, this is a Republican message. I defend the platform. It used to say we got rid of the Department of Education. It doesn't say that. Now, we as Republicans went and doubled the size of the Department of Education. So where, where have we gone? I think we've lost our way. And then the insinuation that I am less Republican because of that? Congressman, thank you very much. We have to take...
What about the big hoax that I see ongoing? They did it three and a half years ago. They're doing it again. Uh, I heard it on local talk radio this morning. Yeah, Ron Paul's winning the straw polls and scientific polls in New Hampshire and Iowa. Normally the news would say that's the front runner. He's probably going to win. He would be catapulted into the absolute national lead, and, and, and Ron Paul would end up being the president. But the system has put out the talking point that all the little minions and compartmentalized people parrot. They're not even government agents. They're just, they just go with the flow, and they're saying Ron Paul can't win. Ron Paul can't win. Ron Paul can't win. Ron Paul can't win. The American people want somebody with better-looking hair like Rick Perry or Mitt Romney. Both of them literal Democratic operatives in the flesh. Oh, oh, you didn't know Mitt Romney wrote the health care bill that was the model for Obama? Uh, you didn't know he supports global carbon taxes? You didn't know Newt Gingrich supports global carbon taxes? And is a, wrote the foreword to Alvin and Heidi Toffler's well, two of their books, Calling for World Government? I, I've read the quotes here. Calling for World Government? And the end of national sovereignty? Just like the former editor of Newsweek, Strobe Talbot? Or, or, oh, you're thinking, well, Rick Perry, Al Gore's former sh campaign chairman in Texas for president. You mean him? All right. I told you Rick Perry, well, I actually told you three and a half years ago, it's an end game, was going to run for president in the 2012 election. I told you two years ago, he was going to claim he wasn't going to run and going to run. I told you uh, when he made the pledge Six months ago to not run in 2012, I said he's going to break that pledge. He plans to break it. He's, he's piquing your interest that, that, that he's the hero who is reluctant 